I had an opportunity to meet this young brother through um, Ali from the St. Lunatic. Shout to Ali for making an introduction. This is a young man that he's mentoring, um, his protege. You know, he's a fashion designer. He's a producer. But I was particularly fascinated with his lifestyle. Uh, I, I believe... He has something like five wives, and I knew I had to get him on the show because it's it's a topic that uh, many people want to know more about. But, uh, you know, where do you go to find out? And I figured, you know, we come right here to the source. Please welcome Yakin. Yakin, what's up, brother? Hey, thank you for having me, King. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Yakin, um, like I said, I met you briefly through... A good friend of mine, Ali, from the St. Lunatics. And when he introduced you, I I, kind of was blown away because you look like a young brother. uh, And you told me you had five wives. So before I get into the details of that lifestyle, where are you originally from? Okay, so uh, my family's originally from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I was born in I was born in Burbank, California. I was the first child born out here, but I went to school in both Los Angeles and in St. Louis. So I did like elementary, middle school, high school, going back and forth. But I ultimately graduated high school and went to college in St. Louis. Got you. Okay. Uh, growing up, do do you come from a traditional family? Is it a two parent household, or is it uh, mm-hmm. it it's, it's traditional? Yeah, so I grew up with my father and my mother in the household, and I had an older sister. Okay. Yeah. And my parents are married. They were married. They had a divorce later in my later teens. Okay, so educate me. Um, you you have multiple wives. Oh, wh- okay. Where did you get introduced to this lifestyle? So uh, when I started doing this lifestyle, I had no compass um, I had no other people that were showing me or no other way to gauge it. I just um, was on my spiritual journey. I seen Muslims with multiple wives, but I didn't particularly know anyone, but I've seen it. And uh, I'm, I'm really big into studying like scripture and ancient Kemet. So I was always open to the idea, but I had no structure. I had no um, I had no other foundation on how I would do it. So when I did it, I took I, I was out on the limb and I tried it out. And then the first brother I met that was doing it too was Brother Polite. So when I met Brother Polite, he had three or four wives. I had three or four wives. And for me, um, that was the first time I had seen anyone else doing it. Okay, stop there for a second. Most of us, when we think of uh, this type of lifestyle, we think Muslim. Um, we, mm-hmm. we, we think the East. Um, Mm -hmm. Did you grow up Muslim? Did you grow up with any religious affiliation? I grew up with no religious affiliation. Uh, My mother and my father, neither one of them were big on going to church. Uh, They were big on um, treating people how you want to be treated. And um, they were always open to the idea like uh, that there's a creator, but it wasn't pushed upon me. My household, I wouldn't say was religious at all. Okay, um, and for the audience, and even for myself, it, what is the difference between polygamy and polygyny? Okay, so polygamy would mean multiple spouses in general. So polyg- polygyny can fall under the category of polygamy, but polygyny is specific to one man, multiple wives. Okay, where do you fit in this spectrum? Are you... Polygyny? Polygyny. Okay. So this is, you You said that you started to learn this on your spiritual journey. Mm-hmm. How did this journey come about from you? Was it a spiritual journey uh, that had oh, yeah. to do with, with relationships? Was it just about life in general? Mm-hmm. And how did it lead you to this place? Okay. So, um, I was in St. Louis and I was uh, rapping. I was a local rap artist uh, when the internet broke through. 
And so um, Soldier Boy and me, we're in the same generation, like 90 babies. And so we started doing music together. And um, as the, the popularity was growing, um, I was growing spiritually. And I gave all that up to follow a spiritual path. And so it was my spiritual journey first because I built who I was as a man and I totally left everything I was doing before alone. I wasn't even actually thinking about the polygyny originally. Originally, I was just thinking about bettering myself and just getting closer to the source. I became addicted with the, uh, with the game of life. I became addicted with knowledge and I had just dived into this path. And so basically what happened was um, I wanted, I was, I had no friends really. All my old friends started judging me and everybody wanted me to keep rapping and everybody wanted me to be a character. And I didn't want to be the character I was becoming. I was growing and I just wanted to follow my journey. So I then started thinking tribal, like I started really valuing like minds. So that's when I really started thinking like, okay, I need to build a family. I need to have wives who are on the same accord as me. And I want to build children because I need people that's on the same wavelength as me. That was, a, that was like the initial start for me, was just being in my own world, being misunderstood and just going, when I start meeting the right people, I want to build a tribe. I want to build a family. Okay. Um, got it that this thing starts off as a spiritual journey. And within that mm -hmm. spiritual journey, you start to have some awakenings. Um, mm -hmm. Did you ever buy into one man, one woman? Were you ever in a monogamous mm -hmm. relationship before this spiritual journey? Yes. Yeah, so um, I was one of those kids growing up where um, I just would date and I would tell I would tell girls, I don't even want a girlfriend. You know, I want to just date. Um, so I, I think I kind of had it in me earlier, but I didn't know how to handle it, but I love monogamy. I love love. Um, so by the time I was in my teens, I fell in love with a young lady and I was totally monogamous. I was totally faithful. Um, I always tell people that in order to do polygyny correct, you have to be great at monogamy because it's like, this is like monogamy multiplied. So I took the same skills that I had learned how to love that one woman. And I, and I told myself, I got to go harder if I'm going to love more than one. And so, yeah, I support monogamy. I, that's what I did first. I fell in love, and that really helped my spiritual growth, too. Because when I settled down and was in a monogamous relationship, um, that was the strongest thing that helped me, too, on my journey as well. Spiritual growth and love and having that support. And, um, yeah, so after that, I told myself, um, after that particular relationship, I told myself, I'm going to do a polygynous lifestyle and I'm going to let everybody know, like every woman I date know if she's open to this because yeah, that became my, my, my calling in a sense. Okay. So you're in a monogamous relationship. You clearly have love and affection for this woman. Did you try mm -hmm. to explain the journey that you were on and see if she was open to going on this journey with you or did you guys break up? And you started anew, like, okay, the next relationship I go into, yeah. I'm going to go in yeah. with the mindset that it's going to be me and multiple wives. Correct. Because, um, so like everybody in my family just calls me Ken Ken. So I always say my old girlfriend just wanted Ken Ken. She didn't want like who I was becoming and growing to become. So yeah, I mean, I was dating her and she was part of my growth. And, um, but it, she wasn't compatible. I think she wanted me to, to be, uh, who I used to be. So yeah, when that relationship ended, and, and, and I'm sorry tried, to interject, I'm that. sorry to interject here. Did, yeah, did, yeah, no, did yeah. you at least explain to her who you were becoming and what you were looking to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I explained, I explained. She wasn't okay. feeling it. Okay. Yeah. She wasn't feeling it. She didn't believe in it. And I let her hold me back because um, I was serious about my monogamous relationship. So at the time she told me she wasn't interested and I just shut it down, but I had it in the back of my mind, but I totally left it alone. And so when I got out of that relationship, I said, I'm going to do what I feel. If she's really for me, she's going to hear me out and I need to be compatible, you know? 
and it was it was a tough time because I also moved from St. Louis to Los Angeles with that queen as well, with the girl I was dating. So we had a serious relationship. We moved from our hometown together. We moved to Los Angeles. We were trying to build a new life. I was still studying. I really got deep into meditating and stuff. And she just wasn't compatible, to be honest, because she was, um, you know, the type of person that liked to watch love and hip hop and everything else. And and she was kind of slowing me down and judging me. And I had this person in my household judging me when I'm trying to read or I'm trying to meditate. So I felt like I outgrew that relationship. And then I was just like, I can't go back. I need I need a queen that can keep up with what I'm where I'm going with. How, this. how old were you at this time? Uh, 1920. So literally you're on because most people at 1920, they have no idea who they are. They're still trying to figure it out. Um, clearly you're on a spiritual mm -hmm. journey, so you're trying to figure out who mm -hmm. you are, but right. this is a, a, a hell of a life transformation, um, mm -hmm. and, 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 and very self-aware if, if, if I have to say it that way to say, look, the, mm -hmm. the, the traditional relationship, uh, that America has mm -hmm. bestowed upon us one man, one woman. Um, it, it's not for me. Were, were you even surprised mm -hmm. that you were going down this path? And at any point, did you say yeah. to yourself, what am I doing? Because this is very much counter everything that America yeah. teaches. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, that's why I kind of brought up the rapping thing, because it was like I was going against the grain for so many years. I was fighting for this. So. To me, it was just an extension of who I was becoming. I was already going against the grain on so many levels. Uh, back then at that time, people were calling me crazy. Uh, I was a conspiracy theorist for some of the same values and facts that I stand on to this day. I've seen the world kind of come up and I've seen people change their mind. People that judged me real hard a long time ago kind of swing around. I mean, there was even a time when I worked, I had a job and uh, I had got fired just for being black basically. And this was such a different time in this day that I even told people I was going to sue the job for firing me because I was black and people were looking at me like I was joking, like I had like it was a um, a goofy, uh, like I was dreaming and I had sued the job and I got my money. And so I was just going against the grain on so many levels at that time that I just was like, man, can't nobody tell me nothing. You know, I got to do what I feel. You know, the world's big enough. People are out here. And I felt like people were growing and we were all growing. So I just stayed firm. I was thinking about this the other night. I feel like it took a lot of confidence, you know, to step out on this limb mm, too. Sure. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I stepped out and I really believed in myself and, and I had a lot of people doubting me. And like you said, um, I also doubted myself sometimes. And that led me to meditate more because I was go, why are my own thoughts against me sometimes? Why am I battling, you know? And it was a, that was a deep time for me. You know, I had, I had been celibate for two years before I'd even met my first queen. I had totally stopped dating. Because it was like, what am I dating for, you know? And I just totally was like, man, I'm just going to do my own thing. I'm just, I'm not even going to think about dating. And then the girl that I first started dating was a friend first. So me and her were friends and we would just talk and, and then she, she saw the vision. Okay. But be before we go there, you know, and, and I, and I really want to go deep in the polygynous lifestyle. Uh, okay. but what were your other awakenings for lack of a better way to put it you're on a spiritual journey no, was great. it was it only that I, that i should be with multiple women or did other things come out of it no yeah no so originally um i'll just be honest so originally when i was in like middle school i started having this consciousness where i would see patterns in the design of life so i started noticing how um eating different fruits and vegetables and different things was affecting my body and affecting my mind state. And so, uh, and I would see patterns just like with um, kind of like people call the universe sending you signs. So long story short, uh, I want to go into detail, but when I was in middle school, I saved a kid out of a lake from drowning, out of a frozen lake. So, but the only reason I was able to save the kid out the lake is because I was following signs. So this for me was the initial moment that, wait up, this is real. The signs, like the signs that I'm seeing is realer than the reality I was mm. living in because it aligned, it aligned me to save someone's life. And I only was there because I was following signs. 
So when that happened to me in middle school, I totally was like, okay, um, I'm paying attention to these spiritual signs. I'm not going to uh, live a regular life. I'm not a regular guy no more. People were telling me, even when I told people what happened, they would laugh. You know, they would laugh and I go, I saw this, then I saw that. And then I was thinking this and I kept going and people would laugh, you know, but I wouldn't laugh. It wasn't funny to me. To me, it was, it was like I was on to something, you know? And so fast forward, by the time I'm graduating high school, I'm like, yo, you know, you know, to be honest, I was like, yo, I might be God himself. You know, I, I don't think like that anymore, you know, but to be honest, my ego was big at that time. I was like, yo, I'm seeing so many signs in the way my life is going and no one's really listening to me. I'm like, yo, am I, did I put, am I God himself and placed himself in the game and wanted to see what I wake up and, and see the, the fabric of the life I was living, you know, of the whole universe. This is where my mind was back then. And uh, as I grew, I learned to, uh, I learned about a creator higher than me, of course. You know, I don't think like that anymore. That was very egotistical. But, uh, but yeah, I think I had a lot of confidence uh, back then. And, and I just felt like I was on a whole nother wave, King, to be honest, you know. You know. And I was saving lives. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, again, um, you know, th this path that you found yourself on and this self-awareness, it, it, it's, it's very different than most folks. And you're talking about junior high school, paying attention to signs. Um, you, you're talking mm -hmm. about a high school really mm -hmm. coming to, to a place where you're like, everybody around me doesn't see what I see. Am I the creator mm -hmm. himself? That is, that is very mm -hmm. egotistical. It's very bold. <laughs> but even to go there, you have a, a, a sense of awareness that most people don't have, especially at that young age. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to me about me in your first wife. You say you were a celibate for two years. Mm -hmm. you celibate. Are, are you now saying to yourself, look, I'm a man, I have needs, and, and I need to just meet a woman? No. How, how, does it, how does this first wife come into your life? At that point, I had been cheated on too. So I had been cheated on by my last girlfriend who I tried to hold the relationship Is, is that the same girlfriend we so were talking about earlier? Yeah, the one I moved yep. out to California mm -hmm. with. So that heartbreak kind of turned me off when it came to um, sexual relationships or dating women because I felt like she was the most thorough woman on the whole earth, to be honest. You know, I felt like she was the one. She was solid. She was an honest person. She had class and dignity. She was a classy young lady. Um, she wasn't just like some hood rat or nothing. So, man, when I got cheated on, because people thought I was goofy, I guess. You know, people, people started thinking, like, this dude's going crazy. You know, and so she cheated on me, man, and it just turned me off, to be honest. I wasn't really even interested in dating after that, really. I just wanted to find God. I, I was down to die about it. Like, all I wanted to do was was find the creator. Who's sending me these signs? You know, who created this? I started feeling like I was on to the patterns, and I wasn't the creator. So I'm like, I just want to do this. That's the only thing I cared about. I was like, yo, I could die. I had ops. So you got to think. Growing up in St. Louis, it's like Chicago and stuff. Like, it's a very grimy city. So I had ops. I felt like I could die any day. I had been set up. I've been shot at multiple times, uh, jumped. I had been through so much that even as a young kid, I just thought I could die any day. All I wanted to do was just get closer. That's all my mindset was in that time period. It was like, you know, let me just get as close as I can get. If I die, let me die honorable. You know, whoever's watching me, let them see me. Like, that's where my mindset was at in that time. I wasn't even, I didn't even want to date. I just wanted to. To, to find the truth, you know? Okay, so walk me through, and, and again, paint the picture for, for me in this audience, because I, I, I'm trying, you know, women are, are, are jealous. Women want mm -hmm. you and only you, and they don't want you looking at another mm -hmm. woman. Help me to understand true. what the conversation looks like when your first wife, wife walks into your life, how do you even approach a conversation like this? And was she into the lifestyle and okay. it just made it easier for you? No, uh, none of my wives that I'm dating right now, none of them were doing poly before me. 
this was all of their first time. So um, the first queen that I was dating, we were friends first. And so as friends, I would talk to her about stuff and she would ask me little things like, are you dating anybody? And then I would, you know, let her know why I'm not or or if I did go out on a date, why it didn't work or what I thought about the person. And I think at some point me and her were, were like minded. I would see how she would interact with me. And um, at some point, me and her kind of were getting attracted to each other. And I told her, before we get too attracted, let's just be honest. I'm interested in a polygynous lifestyle. So did, did you have to explain you know, that to her? This... Yeah, I had okay, to because that, that that's not before something we... most people. It's like, what what exactly is that? Right, right. So I had to explain it to her, um, and she had to believe it can work because we also we didn't see anybody doing it. Okay, so st- stop, for stop for was... a minute. Like, like <laughs> you, we can't gloss <laughs> past this part. You okay, and this woman, were, were you intimate when you told her you're interested in, in this poly lifestyle? No. not You guys far. had never gotten no. that far? Never gotten that far at all. Okay. No. Because I didn't, want to, I didn't want to get that far because it was like, um, I don't want to play around. You know, um, I seen that we were getting attracted to each other. And I said, yo, before we start having sex, before we become a couple, before it becomes a thing, I got to let you know, like, where I see this going, you know? I'm not at a standstill in life. My life is growing right now. I'm following God. I'm following the creator. Um, If you're going to take this journey with me, it's bigger than us. It's going to be more wives. And I'm trying to build something here. I plan on having a family, a big dynasty one day and helping our nation, helping us as quote unquote black Americans, like get back into our bag. And there was a lot of spiritual stuff too. So it was like, um, she was open to a lot of the spiritual ideas and she was open to studying a lot of the same things as me. So I think that was a powerful point too, that, you know, um, I had met other women who weren't even interested in some of the ideologies that I was studying, you know? So me and her were like-minded. And when we were studying things, she also seen how in the past there were multiple wives. Okay. Let's talk about her for one second. Did she grow up in the church? No, she did not. And I think that helped us, to be honest. Why so? Because, because I think if we grew up in a church, we would have been kind of had a stigma already of that was wrong and that was bad. Um, and then um, when we're studying our own things, like when we're studying scriptures, we see Abraham had multiple wives and we see Solomon and David. And we see um, these men, these these biblical figures and how they had multiple wives. So. We, you know, we had our own perspective on the scriptures even because um, I read the Bible for myself also around this time meeting her as well. So um, I, you know, I was on that journey where I was like, OK, I see what they're doing in the scriptures as well. And I knew that what I was doing was right. OK. How old was she when you when you guys started dating? OK, so she's just one year younger than me, so she must have been 21, 22. OK, so both of you guys are kids. I, mm-hmm. This was not part of the fabric of who she was. She wasn't raised this way. And as right. you're talking to her, you're finding that she is really open to following you on the spiritual journey, because I got to believe that her, like most women, it's, I'm looking for mm-hmm. a husband. I'm looking for, at that time, maybe a boyfriend right. that turns into a husband. I, right, it, right. It's just very interesting to me um, that you found a woman that was even open to this concept, knowing I'm not going to be the right. only one. This is just the start. And who knows where it ends? Right, yeah. And and she was open and... um it was verification for me. That was a sign for me that I'm going in the right direction. Um, I let her know what I was doing and it registered with her. And she was, oh, well, I kind of had this in my mind a little bit in her own type of way, like deep down in her mind, like she had found herself going, I want to build a family, a big tribe. And she said uh, she wanted a husband. But she also was becoming interested in women, too, to where she was like she wanted some type of relationship with a woman in her life, too. And I think um, so it was kind of like we aligned at that point and we were going, think we can actually do this, you know. And she was open and she said and she was honest and she was righteous. 
And so for me, that was verification. And then the second queen as well. So me and her. Hold on, before before we go, we before we go to, to, to the second. Okay. okay. You you obviously you and your first wife, you consummate your relationship. You're intimate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How long was it before you guys decided to bring somebody else into the relationship? And how do you even determine something like that? Is it is it a right away thing? Is it okay? We discussed this. We knew this was going to go, and you know, let's start recruiting. Or do you guys spend a few years together and say, "Look, I, you know, I want you for me and only me, and I know eventually we're going to go there." But let's have our little honeymoon. Like, how, how does that work before you introduce a whole other person into the bedroom? Okay. Well, the first person that me and her started uh, dating was a woman she knew. So she had a friend. They weren't sexual or they weren't um, on that level, but the energy was there, I guess. Um, just just two women friends. It was a new friend. And so that was the first one. We just dived right into it. We just said, How long okay, were y'all together before, um, before she brought her in? Uh, maybe six, seven months. Okay. Um, this was a young lady she knew, and it didn't work. You know, um, we never, um, it was never a sexual relationship. Uh, we dated, we just hung out, we talked a lot and, um, uh, that one didn't work. And, and, and for the purpose of also, clarification, uh, what is the difference between mm-hmm. dating? Because I, I hear you keep making a distinction with dating and being in a relationship. What, what, what is the difference to you? Mm-hmm. Well, cause the dating is more like a courting thing. It's like, to me, it's like, uh. We're just hanging out, seeing if there's chemistry, seeing if we're like-minded, seeing if when we talk, we kind of, you know, can keep up with each other and feel each other, feel each other out. So that first queen that we dated, it didn't get past that stage. Okay. But I found it to be powerful because um, you know how you're dating a girl, even on a monogamous relationship, and then it's like uh, the person... The relationship doesn't grow because of the other person is basically on some BS, you know. Um, I found it to be powerful that I have my queen with me seeing me date because she can see where, where the relationship goes left or see where I get judged or see where I get, you know, um, you know, uh, wrote off. And so I think when I noticed that, that was another element. I was like, oh, this poly life is really powerful. Because um, it's not just my opinion versus theirs. We have a third party engaged with our relationship. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I mean, you got to point it out. I'm wrong. Or if someone else is wrong, they're wrong. And when I, I noticed that element, I was like, okay, uh, we need to date someone okay, else. So you know, you, you, go, uh, go ahead. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. I want you to interject because there is so much I can say about each subject because this was years before. It took us about three years until the next queen locked in. Okay. And we dated about... You just made it a point to say when you were dating uh, this other young lady, which Mm -hmm. opens up a whole perspective I never thought about. Is it your wife watching you date another woman or is it y'all dating that woman together it's both it's actually three dynamics because it's us dating the woman together it's me dating the woman and it's them dating each other or friendship or you know it's it's them building with each other so there's three elements going okay on. so is and everybody going on dates together and then going on dates individually correct really <laughs> correct yeah That's how we did it. (laughs) And and, and you're doing this very intentionally. We we want to know if individually we work with this woman. And then we want to know if collectively we all work together. Right. Right. Because whatever's good for me has to be good for the tribe. If it seems good for me, but it's bad for my tribe, it's really wrong. So that's one of the things we stand by as a family. Like if it seems good for one of us, but it's bad for somebody else. It's not the right look. And so, yeah, we were serious and we would date and they had great chemistry and I had great chemistry with her. 
And uh, I feel like that relationship could have worked. To me, I, I believe in like a thing like soulmates in a sense. So to me, even that queen to this day, I feel like she is post supposed to be with us. But the ego, the trauma, um, and even uh, her own promiscuous, the girl was more promiscuous, I would think. I would say her own blockage kind of didn't make her part of this scenario. I think, uh, you know, we got to get out of our own way also for this. Any love, any love has to work. For any, even a monogamous relationship, we have to be trying to make this work. We have to be doing our best and challenging ourselves. And I think that first queen, she wasn't willing. Understood. Okay. How do you bring on your second wife? So um, we uh, we dated about two more queens and it didn't work, you know. Um, so then when the second wife comes, uh, let me see how that happened. I remember she moved in. She was a believer and me and her would talk on the phone. And we would talk over the internet and just talk over the phone. And so I had met her at an airport. So um, when I met her, she doesn't particularly know that I'm doing polygyny. She just met me, you know. Um, when I start talking to her, I let her know what I'm doing. She's resonating with everything. And she was at a point in her life where she was, um, uh, she was graduating. She's over here waving at me now. <laughs> um she um she she just came and stayed with us. She took a leap of faith. She how said, how old was I'm she willing. at the time? Aja, were you nineteen, twenty? Yeah, nineteen. She was nineteen, and she took that leap of faith. And she said, "You know, I'm gonna come, and I'm gonna put my best foot forward." Because also, um, something that I'm big with is less work on it. Like we don't need to just come together and be perfect immediately. But it's also this thing of, are you willing? I'm willing, right? She's going to come with baggage. She's going to come with um, ideologies that may need to be challenged. You, and she may want to challenge me. Let's let's get together and let's do this. Let's get, you know, I'm willing to get challenged. I'm willing to have these dialogues. And so she had, she had enough confidence in herself. And I would say she had enough balls to come challenge me, you know, and to come try it in. And see what it was worth. So I always appreciated her because she solidified our relationship as a polygynous relationship. When she came, now it was a fish. Yes. Now we really got now it's three of us for real. You know. You you know, I, I should have asked you this earlier. Where where does your parents fall in line with this? Your parents are watching you go okay. through this spiritual journey. <laughs> they didn't raise you this way. I'm sure your right. wives uh their parents didn't raise them this way. Right. How, how? So, yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So, um, my mom was against it originally. You know, uh, my mom was against it. She said, you know, you were always a one woman man. Because I was. I'm a, I've always been an honest guy. Like, when I was younger, I just wouldn't date. If I wasn't, if I was going to cheat or whatever, I just would tell the girl, we can't, I'm not in a relationship. But I had cousins who would tell the girl, yeah, we're in a relationship, but still have other girlfriends. So in my family dynamic, my mother and all them seen me as the honest one, you know. And so it was she kind of felt like I turned my back on who I was mm. to do the to do the poly life. She kind of she would just she would kind of just, you know, she would just tell me, like, I don't like this. You know, you're a one woman man. And, you know, so she was against it originally. My mom's a tough. What about person. your dad? My mom's probably one of the toughest people in my family. My dad, he's super laid back, and he's just like, if you like it, I love it, you know. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm on the outside. What are the rules of being in a poly relationship? Because okay, I, I know the rules of being in a, a traditional monogamous relationship with one person. Do those same rules apply? Like, yeah. I would say it is the exact same rules. The only difference is um, you allow the space to date. Um, you don't allow the space to fornicate, though. You don't allow the space to um, have sex while you're dating. You know, like we go by this thing like, you know, while we're if we're dating, um, we can't we can't go kiss the girl. We can't have sex with the girl. We can't share drinks with the girl, you know, um, 
the person is still an outsider in a sense until they officially become part of the relationship. Okay. Do you have to get permission from all of your wives to date? And is it you mm. doing the dating or is it a discussion and maybe wife number three or wife number four, they want to go out and date? How, how does that whole thing work? Because you say that's the difference is there's a right. So, uh, yeah. And you were kind of breaking right there, but I, I got the gist, gist of the conversation. So what I would say is um, it's just open to however it flows because I can't predict who's going to meet who. So in the relationship I have right now, there's five wives. Four of them I met, but one of them, one of the queens did meet on their own. So again, do you need permission to date? Meaning, oh no, you don't need permission to date. No, nah, because they already know what we're doing. No, 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 no. I mean, maybe I'm uh, not asking. Let me be specific. Within your tribe, as you refer to it, do you guys come sit at the kitchen table, sit in the living room, wherever you guys are at, and say, look, I met somebody today. Is it okay mm -hmm. if me and this person date? Or are they allowed to date on their own? I'll tell you exactly Go how ahead. I go. So if I'm sitting down and uh, one of my wives come in and go, yo, I met a pretty girl today. She had a great personality. I'm going, where's she at? <laughs> I'm going, you didn't, you didn't meet her for lunch? You didn't go talk? You didn't go see if y'all can build? Like, that's how our dynamic is where, um, no, we're, we, we encourage that, you know, build the relationship, hang out. You find somebody you think is a cool person, talk to them. Uh, let us know what's going on, though. You know, keep us in the know. That's a great, you know, that's a great conversation. It's a great subject. Let's talk about it, you know. And that's how we do it. You know, we support that. And uh, I love to see them have a good time, even if uh, it doesn't go past the one date. I just love them dressing up, hanging out with somebody, having a, getting treated well, and just having a date, you know. Are they only... Okay, I'll ask it a different way. Are all of you only able to date women? Can any of your wives Correct. date a man? No way. <laughs> nah, they can't date a man because uh, why? Also a part of the because also a part of the polygyny is I'm going to plant my seed. So part of our knowledge that we have is that the man has the seed. It's kind of like a, a apple tree. Every apple produces itself. So the thing is, in order for us to build this nation, we got we want to plant my seed in multiple earths, multiple queens. If we put another man into the scenario, then it'd be different seeds and it's not the same family structure that we're trying to create. You don't think that's just a bit selfish and egotistical? No. Nah. Break, nah, break, <laughs> we're having a conversation. <laughs> break it down to me. Why is that not? No, it's great. No, it's great. It's great because to me, um, it's my family in a sense, because I do believe in the, uh, like, I do believe the man is the leader of this household. Like I said, I, I do subscribe to the father God. I do subscribe to the, the son and the father and the Holy Spirit. So to me, that's already the fabric of the design of the life we live in. What God is to me, I am to my woman, what my woman is to my, to the children one day. So the order I feel like uh, the structure, we all agree on the structure of how we want to build our life, you know? Okay. Again, it sounds a little selfish on your part, but I get it. I, I understand your, your thought process. Um, because I can't have somebody having sex with my girl, yeah. right? If you're in a monogamous relationship, you're not sharing your girl yeah, with but no you're, man, you're, right? You're talking from a man's standpoint, and that's exactly how Sean would feel. <laughs> I would say the same thing you're saying. <laughs> and I didn't go down that spiritual journey that you went down. Uh, okay. Um, let me ask you something. From a man or woman standpoint, me. what are the benefits of a poly lifestyle? If you if Right now, there's going to be somebody who's going to watch this. And they're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's a man or a woman. Their, their interest has been piqued. Mm -hmm. But they're scared, you know, what, what am I getting myself into? From your standpoint, what are the benefits? 
Okay, so um, the benefits is teamwork, uh, always having a support system. So, like, for instance, everything gets done. No, no one works hard. One thing that I'm big on is I don't want no one working too hard. I don't want to put no weight on no one's back. So, like, we're running a household. I don't want the same person doing the dishes, doing the cooking that day. I don't want the same person who swept doing the dishes or if I, I don't, if I drove and picked somebody up, I don't want to be the same one. Um, I don't know. Um, um, just doing anything. So I think it's about lightening the load in a sense with the lifestyle. Like, um, it's beneficial on that level that we don't have to stress. There's always someone with enough energy to do something. We never have to push each other to do something when we're, I'm kind of beat right now. So that's one of the dynamics. The second dynamics is, um, I plan on um, doing a lot of business. So we run our own business as well. So with our business, I plan on growing it. So we have a staff. We have a, we have a structure. Um, and even before we were doing our own businesses, when we were working, we had multiple incomes, multiple streams of incomes, even from working regular jobs. So when we have regular jobs and you got three, four people with a regular job, you know, you just you just multiplied the money as well. So it left it left room for us to um, um, invest into ourselves. And um, we also into real estate. So my mother's big into real estate. So we're into real estate and um, building our credit and stuff. And it also makes sense with what we're doing there, because there's only there's only so many uh, loopholes in the real estate business, kind of like when you buy the house and then you take a loan out on the house and the whole way you 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 play the system. Um, we could play that game multiple times at the same time with multiple people too. Understood. So for us, and then, and then I want to say, um, having children, I want to have a big family. My Queens want to have a big family, but none of them want to have more than one or two children. They all want to have a big family, but they don't want the pressure of having three, five, ten children. So that also, uh, took the stress off that element to where we all like, cool, we can have a big family, uh, and also be supportive for each other, help each other through pregnancies um, and give the game to each other, talk to each other. You know, women experiencing things, being able to share with each other. So for me, I think there's so many benefits to this lifestyle, you know, and as a man, as a man, you are um, you, you do have a, a high sexual appetite. And uh, I think it's also healthy to have multiple options. You're not just drilling one person all the time or or making somebody do something they don't want to do just for you or whatever. It's like, there's always a natural flow and it's harmony. And I think that's beautiful. Great. Uh, let me ask the, the, the flip side of that question. What, what, what's the downside for somebody watching this, considering getting into this lifestyle? What, what's the downside? You said it. Jealousy, jealousy, um, dealing with the cattiness, you know, women can be catty and jealous and just having to sit down and have the talks sometime you know as a man you gotta sit and talk if you got if you're in a monogamous relationship you gotta oh let me have some patience let me talk and break this thing down it's having to do that multiple times a day sometime with multiple people when you're already pretty much rolling out you're like yo i had a i had a conversation that made me oh, already today you know and you may have to do it again with someone else and so I find that, but it's all worth it. You know, it's worth it. People not lying when they say it could be a headache. Because one woman, I mean, just building with one person could be a headache. So I think that is true. You got to be willing to accept that and roll with the punches, you know, and eat that, you know. But you're getting so much of a benefit, it's worth it. I'm not complaining at so all. So even within this poly lifestyle, women are still going to be women. Meaning, it's not like you. Oh, yeah. Uh, put a gun in nobody's head. It's not like you right. coerce somebody to come into this relationship. You're saying, look, they voluntarily came into this relationship and I still deal with jealousy. I still deal with cattiness. Oh, yeah. And I still deal with oh, yeah. women. <laughs> like, bottom line, women. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you can't escape it. You know, you can't escape it. You know, um, but I think it's healthy when 
I think it's healthy when you don't have to deal with it alone because sometimes you can go, hey, you know what? You're being catty. And they go, no, I'm not. But you got three other women going, yes, you are. You know, and I think that helps the conversation that I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be just a man calling it out. It's like other people are affected. Other people are feeling feeling that energy, too. And I think it helps, you know, it helps because I think a lot of times women don't see the same vision the man sees. Sometimes sometimes they're being catty or condescending and they don't know. But having some other people around, I think it also lightens the load that you're not just the man just always pointing it out. or And then they do it to each other. So they learn this, another consciousness of like, I don't like when she does it to me. Like when I saw her be catty, damn, I didn't like that. When I saw her be condescending, I didn't like how she treated you. And then it makes her adjust how she treats me too. And so I think it, it helps the consciousness of the queen too. Got you. you. You know something? Is there a such thing as cheating in a poly relationship? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Break that yeah. down. Like, let's, yeah, let's say um, I'm dating a queen and she's going, I don't want you doing that. You need to get down with me. It happens. It happens where I'm courting a wife, I'm courting a mm -hmm. new woman, and she's trying to get me out of there. She's going, yo, you know what me and you can do? And, and now if I if I if I entertain that, I'm cheating. Or if I go have sex with her or, you know, or I'm spending my money on her, I'm cheating because I'm taking from my family. So you know? even, even the same simple, thing I mean, if you if you're dating, I got to believe you're going out to a movie, you, you're going out to eat. Yes. Is that yes. considered cheating? No, not. Um, as long as it's in the courting stage, let's say it gets past that stage. Let's say I know that, um, let's say I already hung out with her three, four times and I know where it's going. If I still keep entertaining it and she's not trying to build this relationship with me, we consider that cheap. Cause why am I still trying to entertain and build with her? Why am I still hanging out, wasting time, not hanging with my own wives, wasting money, hanging out. I could have took somebody else to the movies. I could have took somebody else on a boat ride or uh to the beach or whatever so yeah i try not to i try not to just hang out and waste time with people yeah because that's we consider that cheating same thing with them if they're steady in their phone smiling and texting a girl that i know didn't want our relationship then that's a red flag that means something's wrong it's like that's like cheating you know are you jealous are you a jealous man uh i find myself I find myself jealous sometimes, but I check myself, you know. I find myself jealous sometimes, naturally. Uh, even when they treat each other nice. I say, you know, if they if they're enjoying each other so well and and I see them like love each other, I can find myself like, hey, you know, I didn't get that look yet today, or you know, but I check myself, you know, because I also want to see them happy. So I check myself and I want them to be treated good and I want them to be happy and feel love and feel wanted and so i check myself okay too. it's not that often but it okay but they're still women so I, and i gotta believe that that they didn't come into the relationship as uh homosexuals if you will or bisexual if you will yeah they, no. they still Some like did. men so when i ask you right. are you jealous in any way you know i get what you're saying that Maybe they're giving each other some love. But do you find yourself right. getting jealous? Them looking outside the relationship. Nah, them a, them looking at another man. Nah. Nah. <laughs> because um, I know that they're on what I'm on. And um, in order in order for me to be jealous, dude, it had to be Christ or somebody himself. I go, <laughs> because he has to be able to do what I'm doing for them better. You know, to me, I'm going, all right, if you want to go you know, leave what we're doing and go be somebody who, because they're not that person. They're not monogamous people anymore. They're not that person anymore. I know who they are and what they want from life, you know? So if I see them getting attracted, because I've lost women before. I've had, I've had seven wives at one point and I've lost a woman and I didn't mind. You know, I said, well, if you feel like you don't want to do poly, and you want to go do monogamous monogamous relationship? I'm not jealous at all. Well, I'm, I'm not even not I'm even not even talking thing. about going from poly to monogamous. I'm talking about look, y'all kid, 
you're a great guy. I love this 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 tribe we <laughs> built. But that other dude up the street, I, I actually, <laughs> you know, I'm starting to dig him. Have, and this dude looked good. And, no, I have, and, I've never seen that. I've never seen that. You got it. I've never seen. You got that. a hell of an ego on you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you got one hell of an ego on you, <laughs> and, and, and it's and it's probably well deserved. You got five wives right now, so <laughs> I'm asking you a question. You no, like, I'm, nah? We ain't even going down that road. That that don't happen in my house. So they don't look at other men. <laughs> Nah, they. I really feel like they don't, in a sense, because uh, there's also a righteous element. Like to be honest, man, my women are like damn, they're like nuns, man. Like there's a big righteous element to them where I, I don't feel like you know, um, it's like asking the preacher. It's like asking the preacher, um, is he jealous with his wife looking at dudes? I don't think that she's really on that. You know what I mean? I, I don't think it happens. They might find people they think is attractive. I mean, they might find a guy that they think is handsome. And I'm not mad at that because he may be handsome, you know, um, but is she attracted to him? That's the thing. It's, I don't think they find themselves attracted to other men. Okay. I'll leave it there. Oh, it, 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 within this lifestyle, is there a hierarchy? Meaning, th does your first wife, is, is she like that? the head chicken charge? How, how does it work with the women? Yeah, well, I would say that... Um, there definitely has to be a respect on who came first because they've carried this weight of this relationship before whoever's newer, you know. So we do um, like to show respect to whoever was there first. It's not a hierarchy because I believe that everyone's equal, but um, there's definitely um, a balance there because there's also people are better at different things. So like if someone's a better cook, they have hierarchy in the kitchen. If someone's a better driver, they have hierarchy in the car. If someone's a better cleaner, they have hierarchy there. Some of my, some of my women have uh, speak multiple languages, so we expect her to lead when it comes to speaking that language. You know, so we you know we do believe in hierarchy accordingly. But as far as the relationship goes, no, nah, it's, it's equal. You know, I don't see one wife particularly greater than the other. But um, I definitely put some respect on whoever was there first. Okay, let's let's stick with the seeing one wife greater than the other. I mean, you're, you're a human being. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes you just get along with people better than you get along with others. And I get that that all right. of you guys are one. You're, you're in a, a relationship and it works for you guys. But do you find that mm -hmm. you gravitate toward any of your wives more than the others? And is that why things sometimes can get a little tricky with the jealousy uh no nah, um i think that's um like i said they all have different qualities so i'll give this example like some of them are more like baby energy some of them are more like uh like a uh, cuddling type and so we cuddle we may cuddle more some of them are more independent you know and they love me, but they don't have to particularly be up under me, sitting up under me, all the, you know, if we're sitting on the couch or laying up under me. But um, I still make sure I cuddle with everybody. I, sh I still make sure everybody gets love. But now nah, I think naturally uh, some people just want more of certain things than others want. Like some people want to cuddle more. Some people want to um, be around me a little closer than others, you know. And it seems to just all flow out and work. I don't really have a problem um, on that level. They all accept it and understand, like, you know. And, well, I and, didn't ask it. Like I, said, I, I didn't make... ask that question from their perspective. I'm asking from your perspective. Mm -hmm. perspective. You, you, you. Okay. I, I just wouldn't, like, we're all human beings. Do you find, like, you know what? I like wife three and four just so much better than I like one, two, and five. Nah, nah, not me. Nah. Um, I like them all because... To me, it's kind of like having your best meals that you like. You you may have five, six meals you like, and then they're all different meals. You like them for different reasons, but you love them all. You know, I love them all. I like them all. They all have things I like. Mm -hmm. You know, I try I try not to date. I don't want to date nobody I don't like. If I can't be like obsessed with you, 
are attracted to you, I don't really want to date you. You know? Uh, are you done? I think that's how you. Uh, I'm sorry. Are you done growing your tribe? No, no. You still? I'll be done growing. I'll be done growing when I start having children because I don't have any children yet. So my thing is, I'm going to stop dating new women when I start having children and I'm in that mindset. You know, right now we're still open and we're building the tribe and we're building the credit and we're building our money up and we're building our foundation. At some point, I'm going to say, hey, now we've built so much. I don't want to let nobody in. We've built so much. It's done. This is who we are. It's no in and outs no more. We're having children. And that's when I'm going to stop dating. Okay, so you have five women at your disposal at any given moment. None of which has gotten pregnant? Nah, pull out, King. <laughs> pull okay, out. and, and they're all, I mean, out. they're women. I'm sure they want kids. They're all cool with being yeah. on your timeline when you decide it's time to have kids? Yeah. Yeah, because we also have a vision of how this is supposed to play out. So we would like to have acres of land. We'd like to be in a certain space in life at the time. We'd like to have our own form. And, you know, none of us want to have children until we're in that particular situation, too. So they're not rushing me at all. My mom's rushing me. Mm -hmm. My mom's asking me for grandkids. <laughs> And at this point, my mom loves them. My mom knows them. And my mom gets it at this point. And she's like, you know, have the kids. Have kids. You ain't getting no younger. The girl's getting older. And she's on me. But we're waiting. You know, we're not rushing. Wow. Um, okay. How, how does the sleeping arrangements work? It, it, there is literally six people living in this house, mm -hmm. in this home. Mm -hmm. Where do you guys mm -hmm. live? Meaning, is it an apartment? Is it a home? Uh, how many beds? How does this work? Mm -hmm. So, so right now, uh, we got this two bedroom. So right now, we're in a two bedroom right here by the beach in Santa Monica. Ocean out the window. Uh, definitely can't own it. It's way too much to own. But uh, we like to be here. We like the lifestyle around here, and we're saving up. We we we're good at saving. So we plan to be in a big house with acres of land at some point soon in the near future. But right now, no, nah, we're in a two-bedroom apartment. We have two beds in one room. We have two king-size beds put together in one room. And then we have a king-size bed in another room, just one king-size bed. So sometime we may all sleep on the same king-size bed together. And sometime we may, um, um, I may just sleep on the bed with one of them or two of them. And the other ones may sleep on another bed, you know. But we also have houses, like I said, we're doing real estate. So we have houses that we own, but they're in St. Louis, and none of us want to live there. And it, it no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about what so, just in terms of you guys' living situation. So I get that. Okay. Right. How, right. how, how does intimacy work with you guys? You said you have one room where there's two king-size beds put together, another room where there mm -hmm. is uh, one king-size bed. Just one king-size bed. Is there is there a schedule when you sleep with everybody? Is you know are the women sleeping with each other? How, how does this work? No, nah, it's just it's just um it's either with me it's just either with me and they might participate in that with me, or I'm doing one on one. That's pretty much what happens. Okay, so they're never sleeping with each other outside of you. I haven't seen it happen. No. Nah. Uh, they massage each other. They're intimate. I see them cuddle with each other, give each other massages, do each other's nails, um, you know, take care of each other, help do each other's hair. But uh, no, nah, they're not just really just getting intimate with each other on their own time. Nah. Is, is that against the rules? No, nah, I'm open to that. Um, but I haven't had that scenario. Uh, I think that would be healthy, though, as far as I'm concerned. It's healthy sexual energy. But um, I haven't. No, nah, I haven't seen that. Okay. Um, again, st staying along these lines because th this is this is it's very interesting conversation, and I'm just curious. Um, in terms of everybody, I, I guess being taken care of sexually, mm -hmm. 
you know, people have different sex drives. Obviously, you, if you're yeah. involved in everything, you must have a sex drive through the roof. But the women who have higher right. sex drives, are they participating in every session, I suppose? Um, right. So that's how it goes. Yes, that's definitely how it goes. So if she has a higher sex drive, then we're having, we're probably more intimate than, we're probably having more sex than the one that's not, doesn't have as much of a sex drive, you know? Cause it's just all about flow. It's not about forcing or seducing. It's just all about flow. And, and, and forgive me because I know that this can be- uh, No, no subject sensitive. I want to Sensitive dig in. subject matter. But are the other wives typically around? Are they participating? Are they watching or- are they not allowed to watch? Is it is the rules look, you know, me? So I like to do it like, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I like to do it like this. I like to do it like this. Um, if you don't want to participate and you see the flow is starting, just don't be in the room. I don't like someone just sitting there observing. That throws me off. It's just, that's not right, you know? But so that's how we kind of do. If you see the flow and you see we're kind of kissing and it's kind of going there, whoever's not on it just steps out, goes into the other room. Or if they're going to stay in the room, they should come participate in some fashion, whether it's massage, whether it's rubbing, whether it's some level of participation, you know? Okay. Yeah. okay. How, how often are you guys having sex in that house? Man, sometimes multiple times in one day. Sometimes, like, you know, when the pandemic happened, it was like <laughs> every day, multiple times a day, every day, every day, every day, every day for 500 days straight you know what i mean uh it's you know sometime you know we can go a week or two take a break uh but it's a lot of sexual energy and it's a lot of love so even when i tell myself kind of hmm, maybe i should slow down i kind of end up doing it so the only way we really have a break sometime is i have to tell myself all right we're going on a battle of celibacy because we're still spiritual so sometimes we just go all right we're going on a battle of celibacy for two months or Three months. We're gonna go three months straight, no sex, no oral sex. You know what I mean? So we do that too, you know, because after all that sex, like I said, for five hundred days straight, yeah, we took like three, four months, no, no nothing. You know, <laughs> my brother, you, you are, you're a human being. You're a man. How, how do you keep up with pleasing so many? I think women? we have to do. I think it has to do with uh, how much I eat. Like what I eat, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Uh, I would say a healthy diet, you know, my organs and everything. I think it probably starts there, a healthy diet. So is there anything in particular outside yeah. of fruits and vegetables? No, just fruits and vegetables, just a healthy diet. I think um, it teas, a lot of tea. I drink a lot of tea, mm -hmm. um, ginger root tea, burdock root tea, um, I think it's probably what I'm eating, and uh, and I think just the love and the attraction. I think uh, we're attracted to each other. That I'm just I'm attracted, you know. And it's creative, you know. I also believe that sexual energy is tied with creative energy. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a creator. I'm producing music. I'm painting. We're painting, and we kind of stay in that spirit of creating and you know flowing. I think uh, sometimes people don't want to have sex because they're, they're depressed. Or they're mad about something. We try not to have that energy around. If there's a problem, let's just deal with it. Let's not carry this. We don't want to carry grudges. We don't want to carry bad energy or walk around depressed, you know. So we're big on let's keep the energy up. Let's keep the communication. If there's a problem, let's handle it. And let's not let's not be down. You know, I think as long as the vibration's high, I think the sexual energy's high, and I think there's no problem. Got you. Uh, are you legally married to any of these women? I'm not legally married to no. no Do you one. plan to be legally married to any? If they allow me to marry all of them. So you would not marry one without marrying all. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. That'd be wrong. That I feel like that'd be wrong. It, okay, so so we live in America. Um, America, as far as we have come. This is not something that, that sits well with many Americans. Um, you right. know, America has advanced to where gays um, can now get married in many states. 
how how does that make you guys feel and how do you vote for that matter or do you vote no nah, i think that it's not going to happen i think they're not going to allow it you know um that's why to me it's about real estate as well because the way that i because really marriage is a business agreement there's a business benefit to being married so as far as i'm concerned i find other business um the other ways we can entangle ourselves in business and benefit each other and show that i trust so like there's certain houses both of our name is on and there's cars that i just put only in their name and there's other ways to show that i'm i'm uh trusting you on a business level and retiring ourselves in and then we have a trust fund as well so we t- we're tied in through a trust fund and different things you mm-hmm. know but- so i don't plan on doing marriage i don't think it's that necessary the the tradition and you don't believe america is any closer to to allowing uh poly couples nah. like yourself marry nah nah because of how much we get judged like some people think that we get a lot of love but i think we get more hate for what we're doing than love you know most people see it and turn their nose up most people see us and think the girls are brainwashed and i'm pimping most people think that it's a sex coat or um i'm Doing, I've been accused of trafficking and stuff, you know. So I think no, I don't think people are ready for that. I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to get approved no time soon. Yeah, I mean, uh, America definitely has uh, put a stigma around this. Um, you know, when you think about these lifestyles, it's often associated with cults, as you have mentioned. Um, you see guys mm-hmm. like uh, I believe his name is Jeffrey Daniels, but um, he's. Dahmer. Not Jeffrey Dahmer, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Daniels. Dahmer. He he had multiple wives um, and now he's doing life in prison, you know, but there, there are just so many <coughs> stigmas attached to the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But do you find that more and more people are, are embracing it at the same time, even though the masses um, have not yet embraced this? Are, you, are people reaching out to you guys and saying, I, I see what you're doing. I want to learn more. Nah. Yeah, but those are, are an exclusive. Like, to me, those are exclusive. Like, when I meet people like that, I'm like, yo, take my phone number. You know, I follow these people back online. Those people are exclusive as far as I'm concerned. People that can get it, it's like you got a third eye. You're working on a whole level of consciousness, consciousness that most people are not working on. So to me, that's still very rare. Really? No, that's still very rare. Yeah, I think that's very rare. You know, and the only reason I ask you this is because I was talking to a gentleman who lives out of Atlanta. And he was telling me, you know, Sean, him, him and his wife, they're, they're into the same lifestyle. And he was like, Sean, people slide into our DMs mm-hmm. and they literally, you know, want to learn more. They want to be part of what we're doing. He was like, this is not as taboo as it once was in America. This lifestyle is not as frowned upon um, by as many people as it once was. Yes, America might not be ready for it and and is not going to okay marrying multiple people. But he was like, you know, he was like, Sean, me and my wife, we have no problem bringing other women into our situation. They are literally hitting us, asking us to be part of it. Right. No, that's true. No, I got a following, man. And. You know, people are into it, but I think it's kind of a, a fetish. You know, uh-huh. I don't really see. Yeah, so I think it's kind of a fetish to me. Uh, I don't know if it's really hitting on a genuine level yet. To me, yeah, people are interested, but they'll be the same ones judging me and talking, talking down. You know, um, they'll be the same one who's okay with a man with two wives, but when you have five, they say, "Oh no, nah, that's some that's some BS." So to me, it's like, are they really ready yet? If they're judging me. If my dynamics looks like a coat, but two wives is cool. So I think it's becoming trendy in a sense. I think it's almost fetish. It's kind of like people, some people like midgets, but won't really date one. You know, I've had women who want to come try it out or do it just for the prestige, just to say they did it. And, you know, I have that, but it's like, they're not really on it. I don't think they're really on it. Have any of you guys ever considered moving to the Middle East or different parts of, uh, the world where this is widely accepted and and it is legal? Nah. uh, The most we consider is just having acres of land on our own 
and just just being in our own world, you know, just not having to live in an apartment building where you got to keep seeing neighbors looking at you crazy and, you know, you know, just being a different scenario. That's all. Yeah. I mean, um, interestingly enough, you guys live across the street from a beach, so you, you're not that worried about neighbors looking at you, you know, in general. Oh, no, we're not worried about it. No, we're not worried, but it's just you still see it. You notice mm -hmm. it, you know. You notice it. Yeah. But we're cool. We love what we're doing. We we love it. You know, we feel like the world will get there, but I don't know if it's there yet. You know, I kind of feel like uh, I kind of consider it kind of like being a gay dude in the 80s or something. And it was like, you know, the world was getting there, but it was like, man, you got to get through the 90s first and get all the way up to the 2010 mm -hmm. before it really it kind of get normal. Like you're like you're still so far ahead of the the level you're getting eyes and people are looking at you and judging you and and you know i kind of feel that way i kind of feel kind of what they feel I, in a sense i kind of be thinking sometimes like you know damn you know some dudes were gay in the 80s and they had to own yeah, you yeah. know they had to go against all odds more power to you you know what i'm saying that's where we're at with it right now and i feel like yeah it's still it's still not there even though like in the 80s they had vogue and they had drag races and a bunch of stuff i've seen online that was going on in the 80s but it's still i don't think it was it wasn't where it is now no you're absolutely right you're absolutely right and that and i would say that that's a very fair comparison um okay cool. you know so so you know before i let you up out of here um if there's anybody who is interested in this lifestyle learning more about this lifestyle where can they find you or any of your wives? Okay, so um, you can find us on Instagram at uh, Yaken, Y-A-H-K-E-N. So that's my handle across all boards as well, like on Facebook. I'm not really on there as much, but I have a page. And uh, my queens have their own page called Poly God Queens. And that's P-O-L-Y-G-O-D-Q-U-E-E-N-S. And they're on that page. They all have personal pages as well, which you can find on that page. And we have a website called theyesworld.com. That's where you find like our music and clothes and fashion and crystals as well. And um, they can reach us through that site. But uh, I want to say that uh, if you're interested in the poly life, just know it's uh, it's like we were saying, it's kind of like the 80s for a gay man or somebody. It's like people may dabble in and deal with you. But they're, it's a fetish, and they might still hate you. They might still look down on you. The same ones want to deal with you still secretly could be against you. So I found it to where when you find people that's really with it, cherish them, salute them, and um, and much respect. If y'all do it, just know that I respect you, and I'm definitely going to follow back, and I'm definitely one phone call away or one conversation away because my wives, they love hanging with other women that's doing poly. They love hanging with women that has sister wives as well. There's a sisterhood there and they can talk and they, they sit and talk for hours with other queens. And I got other friends like uh, who was doing it too. Uh, one of my friends, uh, King Chip, uh, he's doing polygyny right now. And, and it's just a beautiful thing. And just know they can reach out to me. I'm here. Yeah, I can. Thank you so much for a, a, a very... Um... This is this, this, this a fascinating conversation, man. Um, I learned a lot and, and, and I know, you know, anybody who watches this, they're going to learn a lot. So thanks for your openness and really breaking this thing down for us. Again, um, you know, there, there's so much that us on the outside don't know and don't understand about this lifestyle. And unfortunately, America has not... Um, They've not put positive images out of the lifestyle. It's right. always associated with cults right. or, you know, people being right. held against their will. So it's always good to talk to a right. brother, um, you know, and you're coming from a very spiritual and loving place. This is not something that is is just physical. It's it's greater than um, right. all of you guys, and and you guys are on a spiritual journey. So I appreciate the conversation. Thank I appreciate the openness. And, and, and the teaching and allowing us to learn about your lifestyle. Continue blessings and peace, and my say, brother. And I want to say I appreciate you, too, 
very articulate and for going into these great questions and just being the stand-up guy that you are. I've been doing my research on you too. So major salute and thank you for having me on your podcast. Can Absolutely. You? It's my pleasure. It really is. All right. Thank you. Much love. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.